Okay, we need to talk about stances tonight. You'll notice I stand staggered. Why? Because it's significantly safer. And those who ride midline are taking a risk. And I'll explain later while I'm on the board. My front foot, I keep um, right in this, kind of the heel just about touching the corner here. And I have my heel right on the seam that goes into the battery compartment. And my back foot, I might move around a hair. In fact, I kind of, you'll notice that I adjust this one. But this is essentially what it looks like. When your stance is staggered, you have the advantage of being able to choose which side of the board you have to eject from, making it significantly safer than a midline ride. So when I'm riding midline, if let's say the board were to fall so that the foil comes up this way and I were to be falling in that direction, nothing I can do about it if, if I'm midline. But if I'm crooked, I can choose which foot to, to jump from. And if I choose my back foot, I'm gonna fall this way. If I choose the front foot, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fall forward. That is how you keep from getting stabbed by your own foil. Now, midline riding is something, you know, like I come from wakeboarding, I'm used to midline riding. Snowboarding, midline riding. Uh, surfboard, definitely a smaller surfboard, a more aggressive surfboard. I definitely have moments where I'm kind of jumping around on it, but yep, common for, to see me ride that midline. E-foil, I, you know, when I first started, I was playing around with my stance and I was on a much bigger board then. But I actually saw a video of another e-foiler, which I'm gonna look up for you guys, cause like actually, his public service announcement was exactly the thing I think we should all look at. And he fell, he was midline riding, and he fell and he landed ribs right on the mast. And uh, I, know, I don't think he was like, you know, threat of death, but I know he, he said that he got injured. Um, but I, I've, been looking up more and more injuries e-foil related and I actually tried to do a search um, using my Medline account and uh, I do have the ability to kind of get in there behind you know HIPAA walls and see things no nothing I can really sh uh, uh, share with anyone but um, uh, you know I, I tried to find e-foil e related injuries and to my amazement I was not able to find any records specifically about e-foil related injuries. The doctors just don't even know to ask that kind of question like, hey, was it an e-foil? They don't know about them. They hear, uh, you know, I was on an e-foil and they go, what's that? Oh, it's like a surfboard. So they go, surfing injury. I found a lot of data on surfing injuries. A lot of data even on stand-up paddleboard injuries. Um, when I was looking it up, I found a very detailed report on um, vaginal injuries caused by uh, water. <laughs> Everything from faucet heads to electric, uh, like electric water, water picks, and I uh, found injuries caused by jet skis, um, like the jet from the back of a jet ski and vaginas. But I couldn't really find anything, any any really great source of like medical or healthcare related records that was really using e-foil as as the you know the trackable word um, I, I found hydrofoil injuries but they were all related to hydrofoil like dinghies like boats and um, and so so you know the to my amazement I mean, I've looked up various kind of weird injuries before for projects I'm doing, and I can almost always find like someone's reporting on every damn little thing to find out, you know, which car is most likely to break kids' fingers in the, when the door shuts on them and stuff. Really detailed information. I was amazed that I couldn't really find anything for e-foils. So, um, I'm just going to have to do my own research here uh, the old-fashioned way. Um, and see if I can find videos. I did, I did find a few, and um, I'm trying to determine whether or not I'm right about midline riding being you know, more likely involved. 
and EFOA related injuries. And there's, you know, there's common ones. So like someone's just learning, they stamp on the board and they lose control and the wing comes up really fast and it clips them in the lip and they're into the ER to get stitches. You know, I, I've actually seen that. I've seen a, a news agency went out and like took a lesson and actually the reporter totally had that happen to him. He was from like Australia or New Zealand. No offense, I just can't really tell your accents apart that well because I'm from Minnesota. But um, but he was back on it the same day to finish his lesson after he got stitches. <laughs> but I saw his foot go dead center of the board and he was a surfer. So if you ask me, the people I've taught that are the most dangerous to give lessons to are actually the people with board experience. You know, the wakeboarders, like my friend who is a surfer and a ski instructor and telemark skis and is a good snowboarder, he was actually the hardest guy to teach how to do this the right way because you got to unlearn a lot about what you know about surface carving and and learn how to fly a glider under the water all right i got limited time today so i just gotta rip it up a little bit so i feel like i did something Yeah! Oh, I'm so happy to have my 36 glide back on there. Fuck yeah! Paired with the Camber Pro. Such a good combo. Get into a strong headwind. Damn, I love surfing in the wind. It just feels like you're going so fast. Yeah. Fuck, man, I love e-foiling. Someday they'll do a study on people that love carving and they'll find out like, their mommies rock them too much and too hard or not enough or some shit. Cause like, dude, there is the joy I feel when I get these G-forces going. It's just amazing. Whoa.